It's just before seven o'clock on another fine Florida morning and the sun is clambering over the horizon from the Atlantic Ocean. My location is America's first resort destination. That's the impressive claim for Palm Beach, the long narrow barrier island that protects the mainland from the Atlantic and which gave Palm Beach County its name. little more than a century, Palm Beach has gone from a mosquito-infested swamp to one of the most desirable destinations on the planet. As the island's reputation took off, it attracted wealth and glamour. The Vanderbilts, the Rockefellers and the Kennedys took vacations here. And the allure continues. In the 1920s, when Palm Beach was taking magnificent shape, an heiress named Marjorie Merriweather Post decided to build perhaps the most gorgeous of mansions, Mar-a-Lago. In 1985, it was bought by a businessman named Donald Trump. And within weeks of his inauguration, it had become known as the Winter White House. The town of Palm Beach is separated from mainland Florida and West Palm Beach by the Intracoastal Waterway, which also makes a very handy place to moor your mega yacht. But Palm Beach, the island posing prettily in the Atlantic Ocean, is just one dimension of a very significant swathe of Florida laced with waterways. Palm Beach County is bigger than some entire states, such as Delaware and Rhode Island. You can gauge its scale from one of the great landmarks in the north of the county, Jupiter Lighthouse. On a beautiful morning like this, it's hard to remember that the story of modern Florida is of a struggle against adversity. Here is where the Gulf Stream comes closest to the coast and for years mariners were being shipwrecked until in 1860 the Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse was built. It's now a landmark for this fascinating collection of communities known as the Palm Beaches. Most of those 39 vibrant, diverse and welcoming communities are south of here on the coastal strip of the mainland. But Palm Beach County extends so far inland that it actually has two coasts. To the east, the Atlantic, to the west, Lake Okeechobee, America's largest freshwater lake south of Lake Michigan. And with culture, cuisine, coastline and adventure in abundance, the Palm Beaches are worth 48 hours of anybody's time. First of all, you've got to get here. Fortunately, that's easier than ever. West Palm Beach has its own airport with frequent connections from Atlanta, New York, Washington, DC and other US hubs. You can now arrive in West Palm Beach by top class train thanks to this excellent new railroad option, Brightline, soon to become Virgin Trains. The journey to West Palm Beach takes just 40 minutes from Fort Lauderdale, about half an hour longer from Miami, and coming soon, a direct train from Orlando Airport. And if you need to recharge, it's at your fingertips. The train arrives right in the heart of downtown West Palm Beach, getting your trip off to a bright start. So now I need somewhere to stay. There's simply so much choice here. But that place looks interesting, the colony. Just a block from the Atlantic and full of character, this hotel is a good place to colonize. Oh, hello, do come in, have a look around. The colony was built in 1947 and the name comes from the fact that it's British colonial architecture. The rooms aren't giant sized but they're just what you need, very colourful and full of style. Meanwhile, on the other side of the intracoastal waterway... Amazing, quaint and beautiful. No, not me, the Grandview Gardens Boutique B&B Resort. 
house was created in 1925 in the Spanish Mediterranean style, which means, of course, that it's very bright and breezy with natural air conditioning. Or splash out on one of the oldest motor lodges in the entire USA. The Hotel Bieber is now a boutique property. It's on the National Register of Historic Places with 20th century style and 21st century comfort. And across on Palm Beach, the island, there's another great story to be told. Get your shoes on. My favourite walk on the island is the Palm Beach Lake Trail, which spreads along the western shore of the island and tells the story of how one of America's final frontiers acquired the glory it has today. The oldest structure in Palm Beach is Seagull Cottage, not that old, 1886. Seven years later, it was bought by a man named Henry Morrison Flagler, who was a visionary entrepreneur and decided to send the railroad to this part of Florida. Henry Flagler had long been a colourful businessman who, in his early 30s, ran a salt company. Then he teamed up with J.D. Rockefeller to start an oil firm called Standard Oil. In 1883, he travelled to Florida for the first time on vacation, but found the transport and hotel facilities poor. So he decided to invest in both. In a classic example of the concept of build it and they will come, the rail connection from New York and Washington triggered a tourism boom. Henry Flagler put Palm Beach on the map in 1894 when he opened the Royal Ponciana Hotel. At the time, it was said to be the biggest wooden structure in the world. Very sadly, it was demolished in 1936. But at the same time as the Royal Ponciana transformed the skyline, so too did Henry Flagler's opulent residence. It's the ultimate wedding present. In 1902, Henry Flagler gave this place to his third wife, Mary Lilly, to celebrate their marriage. Between 1925 and 1959, the place was used as a hotel, but it was sliding into disrepair and towards demolition. Then, Jean Flagler Matthews, the granddaughter of Henry Flagler, decided she would convert it into a museum. And it opened on the 6th of February 1960 with a restoration ball. And this is the gown that Jean wore. A real highlight is Henry Flagler's private rail car, built in 1886 to take him to the furthest reaches of his railroad empire. Now, it was abandoned on a farm in Virginia, but his granddaughter rediscovered it. It was restored and returned as a palace on wheels. Or, if you prefer, a rail car named Desire. The Henry Morrison Flagler Museum reveals a fascinating dimension of America's past, as I heard from the Public Affairs Director, Lauren Perry. Visitors who come to Whitehall are going to learn a lot about the Gilded Age, which was an amazing time period for America, a lot of technological advancements, and they're going to see how titans of industry like Henry Flagler wanted to share their wealth and their knowledge of the arts and literature with the general public. Uh, the intention of a house like Whitehall, a grand house, was to eventually be built and open so people could come and experience and learn. After that splendid tour, time for lunch and in the season, which runs from Thanksgiving in November through to Easter Sunday, you can take tea in the Café des Beaux-Arts, complete with pink lemonade and a selection of savouries, not to mention a splendid view of the coconut palms that gave Palm Beach its name. Afternoon tea was very popular during the Gilded Age. We actually have a number of historical photos of Henry Flagler and his wife and their guests 
um, having tea here in Palm Beach in the Coconut Grove. So um, here in the Henry Flagler Pavilion at our cafe, we do serve afternoon tea in that style. It's really a fun opportunity to uh, see his home, see how the Flaglers lived, and also take some refreshment in the same way. And if you want your cake too, I know just the place, 10 minutes walk from here. As the rich and famous brought healthy appetites to their new Palm Beach playground, some tasty and indulgent places sprang up. When St. Ambrose opened in 1936, it was originally simply a cafe offering that classic of coffee and cakes. It still is. And a little way south, you can find some amazing retail razzmatazz. At the heart of Palm Beach is a half-mile thoroughfare flanked with upscale stores and claimed to be the street of dreams. I call it America's ritziest road. London has Bond Street for very upmarket shops. Beverly Hills has Rodeo Drive. And Palm Beach, well, here it is, Worth Avenue. So this is one of the uh, finest pieces of real estate around here in Palm Beach. It's kind of one of a one of a kind place. Italian artisans were brought to Florida to create the Palm Beach look. A ripple of shady Italianate lanes known as vias lead off from Worth Avenue. And in one of them, I met the historian, Rick Rose. Oh, and his shoes. In Palm Beach and in Worth Avenue in particular, this is where luxury brands have been created because they know that if they come here and show their goods and their designs, that it's a very niche focused market. The latest addition to the West Palm Beach skyline is The Ben, a hotel that's part of the autograph collection by Marriott. At the top, to the great acclaim from us in the drinking community, is a bar and restaurant called Spruzzo. That's Italian for splash, because the roof is shared with the swimming pool. You can eat your way around the world here in grand style. All kinds of Asian specialities. Italian pizza, of course, Greek salad, and my favorite, Hawaiian okay. I've got mango, pineapple, fish, a wonderful combination of flavors, taste of the Pacific on the shore of the Atlantic. Clematis Avenue has plenty of choice, but my favourite location for a night out is a couple of miles south. For the best place to drink, always worth asking a local and Everyone I talked to said the Dixie Grill and Brewery, which makes its own beer, nine different brands from Hoplomatic Immunity, that's an IPA, to Bernard and the Bees, a honey ale. But the original, and many say still the greatest, is the Ambrosius Amber, named after Ambrosius, the pub's first dog. The Dixie's drinks and decor are designed to deliver the best possible night on the town. Co-owner Rachel Matter told me more. We are all about local here. We are supportive of our community. Our neighbors are always here. You can find anybody and everybody knowing each other at every visit that they come in. We do have a lot of uh, seasonal residents as well since we are very close to the island of Palm Beach. Um, but still, uh, you can come in one time and you feel like you're at home. If the Amber Ale has sharpened your appetite, well, they can help here at the Dixie Grill. You've got a pub burger, the beer cheese dip, the signature burger, not forgetting the pork sliders, and a side of mac and cheese. Bon appetit. US-1 is the longest north-south highway in America, stretching all the way from the Canadian frontier in Maine to Key West at the southern tip of Florida. 
One of its more celebrated institutions is Howley's Diner, established 1950, with the slogan, cooked in sight, must be right. I need to refuel because I'm spending today travelling through the Palm Beaches from the Deep South to the Fun North and this is the only place I know where you can order a seared ahi sesame tuna salad at 7am every day of the week and have it served by the manager Katie Swift. How Katie, tell me about Howley's. Howley's is a great restaurant with homemade cooked food. We've been doing it for 70 years. We have a cool art show that we do at the end of every month with fantastic local artists and it's a really nice atmosphere. Howley's attracts an intriguing clientele, including the mayor of West Palm Beach, Keith James. We have so much to be offered. I mean, we have a couple of hotels that are going up, the Canopy and the Bend, tremendous cultural opportunities between the Kravitz Center. We have a world-class art museum, the Norton Art Museum. And one of the things I'm most proud of is we are connected by a high-speed train, Virgin Trains, founded by Sir Richard Branson, that will connect people to Miami and Fort Lauderdale. The next phase, which will be opening up next year, will connect people from West Palm Beach all the way up to Orlando in a very high-speed train, one of the first privately financed high-speed trains, and they chose West Palm Beach as one of their initial stations. I'm so proud of that. We have a lot going on. Small town charm, but big city feel. My vision for the city is to build a community of opportunity for all. And what I love about the city is no matter what your interests are, no matter what your needs are, I believe that our city can provide an opportunity for you to build a dream here in our city. Palm Beach County has 47 miles of Atlantic shoreline. And this is one of my favorite stretches, Delray Beach, where there are no high rises between the ocean and the action. In the village by the sea, I've met Laura Simon, executive director of the Delray Beach Downtown Development Authority. Delray Beach is a historic community that is filled with a beautiful collection of businesses, our restaurants, shopping, dining, and we have a beautiful main street that runs all the way to the beach from the interstate. We have been here for over a hundred years, just welcoming visitors and residents and people to come here and work and love and play in our lovely community. If you want to take a ride in Delray Beach, all you need to do is tap the freebie app and any time of day after 11 a.m., one of these clean green electric vehicles will come and fetch you. Of course, other ride hailing apps are available but unlike this one, you have to pay for them. Laura Simon says the idea is simply to encourage people to discover and dawdle in the village by the sea. Absolutely, yes. And then there's also that sense of you trust your driver, you get a little bit of history or a little bit of tidbits and local gems along the way. So it's a cool service that will you know, hopefully grow and be expanded in our community, but really taken advantage of along the way. So. We love it. And the freebie flyer will take you to all sorts of interesting places. Ever since I was a young boy, I've played the silver ball from Soho down to Brighton. I must have played them all, but I ain't seen nothing like it in any amusement hall. It's the Silver Ball Museum. This is a museum you'll find nowhere else in Florida, devoted to pinball with machines dating back to the 1930s. I caught up with Bob, who I must call the Silver Ball Wizard. We want everybody to come in. We want them to touch them. We want them to play them. We want to, you know, bring the children of today, you know, a little bit back into the past to see how everything evolved into what they're doing today. So it's, it's great. It's a living, breathing museum. Interactive. And if you want to go back into digital prehistory, from the 1980s, it's Space Invaders. Time to head north for another cultural attraction. Getting back to nature. Enriching lives through nature, art and history that's the mission statement of the Ann Norton Sculpture Gardens. 
two acres of tropical jungle inhabited by nine monumental sculptures. This garden in the city was created by the late 20th century sculptor Anne Norton. Nancy Jones, who works here, told me more. It was Anne's dream to have a garden filled with sculptures. We have on site the life's work of Anne's from very realistic sculpture to very abstract. For West Palm Beach, this place is a green space, not only for migratory birds, not only for our critters who make this garden their home, but it's also a refuge for people of all ages to find a green space, a quiet space. The Palm Beaches are all about activity, and that's why Venus and Serena Williams were brought here in the 1990s to improve their tennis. It seemed to work. But you don't have to be a champion to enjoy the great outdoors. You could take advantage of the many miles of bike trails, for example. And guess what? You don't even need to be that fit, thanks to these marvellous electric bikes. Using electric bikes makes it just a little easier. The bikes range anywhere from 20 to 25 miles an hour. Or if you're going up a bridge and you might be exhausted, um, you can just use the throttle as well. The Comfort Cruiser costs $16 an hour or $90 all day. Or join a guided tour. Humans are so much better than sat nav. <laughs> This is such fun. You're getting back to nature, but you're getting a helping hand as well. And it's all really quite green and orange. But why just cycle beside the crystal blue waters? How about an underwater snorkel trail? One of my favorite spots in the Palm Beaches is Phil Foster Memorial Park. The location may not look too promising, it's on a small island beneath a big highway. Yet this turns out to be a great jumping off point for the undersea world of South Florida. And you don't have to dive too deep to enjoy an 800 foot long artificial reef. You could just gaze at the sapphire blue water or you can go a little deeper. I've got my snorkeling gear, my flippers and Sandy Carlson, who's the instructor, who's going to tell me what I'm going to see beneath the waters. Yes, we're going to head out to um, what we call a snorkel trail. Every day is different. You can find different things every single day, so it never gets boring, it never gets monotonous coming here. There's always something new to see. I've been lucky enough to travel far and wide in Florida and over the years I've learned just how much depth there is to the Sunshine State and how rewarding it is to pause, to discover new dimensions. Surprising, exciting and serene. For me, that sums up the Palm Beaches experience.